human reproduction and in this video we focus on the female reproductive system so this is video one this topic is quite long human reproduction is quite long so it's best to break it down into many short videos so this is the first video it's really important that you can draw and label a diagram of the female reproductive system just bear in mind as well that because it was asked on a previous year or because it's been examined recently does not mean that it cannot be asked again so just always bear that in mind so the key to this chapter is is diagrams. A diagram of the female reproductive organs should always have the following labels. So start with the vagina and then go upwards and then you meet the cervix which is the entrance into the uterus. So then you have the ovary and you've two of those and then at the end of the fallopian tubes or the oviducts you have the funnel and then the fallopian tubes are otherwise called the oviducts and you've two of those. The lining of the uterus is known as the endometrium and of course the whole structure there is the uterus, otherwise referred to as the womb but mostly called the uterus. So it's really important that we now go through some details on that diagram. So let's begin with the ovaries. So the female eggs are produced by meiosis in the ovaries. Remember meiosis going from diploid to haploid, it halves chromosomal number. So meiosis is very important to state in your answers. So the female eggs we know are formed in the ovaries, but they're actually formed in these structures that develop in the ovaries known as a graphene follicle. So female babies or baby girls are born with thousands of these follicles in each of their ovaries. A follicle is this tiny structure which contains an immature female egg called the oocyte and that female egg, that immature oocyte, is surrounded by other cells so together this forms a follicle. With the onset of puberty or when puberty starts, some of these follicles are stimulated to mature each month. However, generally only one of them will fully mature to form the graphene follicle and the immature egg inside this graphene follicle, the oocyte, will undergo meiosis to form eventually the female egg, the female gamete. At ovulation, the graphene follicle will rupture and it will release the egg which then goes into the fallopian tube or the oviduct. This is called ovulation. So now we know that the female gamete, the egg, otherwise referred to as the ovum, is produced in the ovaries. However, it's produced in the graphene follicle in an ovary. So we also have to know that the ovaries do have an endocrine function, which is really important. They produce hormones. They produce estrogen and progesterone. Really important. So next on the diagram are the fallopian tubes otherwise called the oviducts and it's in the fallopian tubes where fertilization takes place f for fallopian tubes f for fertilization that's how you'll remember it and remember that fertilization is the fusion of those two gametes those haploid gametes to form a diploid zygote so we already know that the female egg is released from the ovary and it's going to enter into one of those fallopian tubes or one of those oviducts and it's little hair-like projections called cilia inside each of those fallopian tubes which will move the egg along depending on which one it's entered. The uterus is often called the womb but on your diagrams please always refer to it as the uterus and label it as such. It's a small muscular structure that can expand greatly when a woman is pregnant and then it will contract back to its original size. Its lining, the outermost layer of the lining is called the endometrium and it's this that sheds every month menstruation and the entrance into the uterus is known as the cervix. The vagina is a tube-like structure made of muscle tissues and so it's very elastic. It facilitates facilitates the entry of sperm into the uterus because it holds the penis during intercourse. It's otherwise called the birth canal because it's down through the vagina that the baby is delivered and it also contains those bacteria which produce lactic acid, part of the general defence system. Externally it's surrounded by skin folds known as the vulva and these make up the external genitalia. Puberty in females begins between the age of 11 and 14, so it can start around this time, but it can also start younger as well. And it's in puberty or at the beginning of puberty that the secondary sexual characteristics start to appear. So what are these? Well, they're defined as those features that apart from sex organs distinguish between the sexes. So it's the development of pubic hair, the development of breasts in females, the widening of hips. And very important that you know that oestrogen is the hormone that controls the female secondary sexual characteristics. 
So at the end of this video, what should I know? Well, be able to draw and label the female reproductive system, give a very basic account of how the female egg develops in the graphene follicle in the ovary. And this is really simplified for our course. We don't need to know much detail. It is a very complex process. So know that the ovaries produce those hormones, estrogen and progesterone. So the ovaries have an endocrine function, define secondary sexual characteristics and give examples of those in females and know that estrogen is responsible for developing and maintaining those secondary sexual characteristics. So the very best of luck, make sure you're doing exam papers, writing your own notes and using your textbook always. Best of luck.